Hey, hard times guy here. Uh, I'm not trying to shock you. I'm just uh, sit down here and forgot to put my hat on. But while I got my hat off, since I'm already exposed, I can always edit this out, I guess. We need to get the barbershops open, you know. I mean, look at this. It's what I look like in the morning. Uh, it takes a while, but I can actually get this to all go in a... Uh, direction that it looks a little better than it does right now but uh, we need to get the barber shops open and we need to get the antique shops open uh, and we need to get the auctions open so uh, I'm sure you all agree with me on that put my hat on save you from having to look at that I'm gonna make some little uh, small pieces of video and I'm going to do that to uh, because some of this stuff needs to be in a video and I don't have a plan for it being in a video and some of it I do have a plan for but it it's not going to all appear in the same video I'm just going to make this video here get it out of the way and then I can edit it and put these pieces in there and uh, you'll probably you'll probably see this in a piecemeal uh, manner in future videos where part of this was in a video and part of it wasn't and then it got put in a video later on. And I think I'll just start out with my some of my props. Uh, this is a box, cardboard box, kind of a, that's just a neat little box. It's a Drugger wafer lozenges I picked it up over there so I would have uh, something to sit things on so that they'd be at the right height for the camera but uh, this was over in the barn uh, if you happened out here to uh, some kind of a sale I was having you might you find little boxes like this this one's made out of cardboard it's nothing special you probably buy that for three or four dollars that's the kind of thing you like to have sitting around and decorating with well there it is uh, vintage or possibly antique uh, box. You all recognize this. It's a Dutch Master uh, cigar box, not too old of one. Uh, I chose it because it's thin and it can help stack. And then this thing is a Bulova watch cabinet. It was made to hold watch parts. There used to be a jillion little dividers in there. I took them out. I still have them somewhere, but they kept falling out or get, keeping the drawer from getting. So there's that one. This one here happens to be plastic. I don't know why. The others I have are all metal. They stack. You can see these little things, little rods sticking up there. That's made that way so that they can stack. Uh, something like this would be 4 or $5 over there. Uh, you know, and that's the kind of thing that you could decorate with. It's old advertising, put jewelry in there. There's a lot of things you could do with something like that. I've got them so that I can do this. All right, that's the first thing I'm going to start with. And this, again, is uh, nothing special. It's just what's called a sad iron, a uh, heavy iron. Set it on a stove or on a fire of some kind, got it hot. It's sitting uh, today on a brass trivet. Trivets were available to sit these on so you didn't burn your furniture up. Uh, I don't know. There's probably at least 10 of these around here somewhere, and I get, I don't know, somewhere, depending on what they are. This one would probably be about 10 or $12, something like that. And I just have that uh, today because of this. And uh, as you can see, this is a very small version of that. In fact, I'm going to hold it up there. Maybe you can see. It says Dover USA on it. It's small. 
put it in my hand to give you some perspective. It's uh, I know I don't have a big hand. It's a small, uh, maybe a toy. Maybe it was really uh, one of these in a small size to do Danny work with. But uh, I don't know what it was manufactured for, but I do know what it actually was. It actually was used as a toy. It belonged to a girl who died when she was seven years old. Her name was Betty Lou. She was my wife, whose name is Betty Lou, aunt. And of course, my wife never knew her because she died before my wife was ever born. But uh, this is an iron that my wife has. It's precious to her because it belonged to her Aunt Betty Lou, her namesake. Uh, <clears throat> it is, this one is not for sale. It usually is uh, sitting on an end table in our living room. And uh, it'll still be sitting around uh, in a place like that somewhere uh, when Betty and I are gone. But so that you know what it is, Dover, USA, small sad iron, belonged to Betty's aunt, Betty Lou. This is a gavel. Come to order. I always thought it was walnut, but it might be, it might be cherry. It's one of those two, walnut or cherry. And it was made by my grandpa Sam. And it was made for my grandma, Wirtis, W-Y-R-T-I-S. Uh, my mother's mother. And uh, she was in an organization called the Daughters of the American Revolution. And at some point in the time that she belonged to that organization, she was elected to be their president and uh, preside over their meetings. And uh, when she was elected president, she was uh, pleased with herself and happy. And my uh, grandfather made her this gavel. So this was made by Sam Eddington for Wordus, uh, commemorative of her being elected by her peers as president of the Daughters of American Revolution chapter in our town. And uh, she used it to preside over meetings as president. This, uh, usually, in fact, I just retrieved it from there, is in a uh, glass-doored cabinet uh, hanging on the wall that has other treasures in it. Uh, hangs on the wall in our family room and you'll hear of that cabinet and see things that are in it again. What we're looking at here is a stick phone. The reason I, you know, I've got about, I think I've got three of these. And uh, another thing I like. I like old things like this. I've got several uh, wall hanging phones too which were from a similar time. These phones are uh, a lot easier to use than uh, cell phones. You just picked them up and you put this up to your ear and you got this over here by your mouth and you went like that. Somebody said operator, and you told them what you wanted to do, and they did it for you, and you got to talk to somebody. You didn't have to punch a bunch of buttons. You didn't have to listen to a recording. Uh, you just told them what you wanted, and you got it. I was watching, uh, and the reason I put this up there, these, these things are, you know, they're still around. They usually bring somewhere around $125 to $150. And um, like I said, I've got three of them and $150 will probably buy any of mine. Um, 
or at least a buy. You might buy a couple of them for that, and then I'd have to save one. But um, this is a stick phone. I was watching my friend Misty the other day. She has, a, uh, if you don't know her, it's like a Thrifter, Junker, Vintage Hunter, I think the name of her uh, uh, YouTube channel is. And All right, we're going to make a quick tour around this room. You may have already met this splendid lady. Uh, rather unusual pie safe. Uh, she's called Grandma Betty's Pie Safe. She's been in this room for 20, 22 years, something like that. She has a lengthy story. You'll hear about it in another video. That's a little old cabinet that's hanging on the wall in this room. I bought that uh, recently from Wildflower Antiques in Bedford. I like uh, wall hanging cabinets. Uh, you might make note of that. We're going to see some more of them probably in this video. Of course, there's some Crocs. Uh, sitting on top of the cupboard and there's a picture that depicts the kind of things I like a blue cupboard with a basket on it uh, so we get over here I think the glare from that mirror is going to make it hard to get a good picture of that but that is another uh, wall hanging it's not a, actually a cupboard but it's I'm going to call it a cupboard or a cabinet for the sake of uh, this uh, description so that's number two in this room and there's a, another picture that I just happen to like. It's a watercolor. Next to it is a table. Uh, my daughter doesn't like it when I show uh, modern stuff in my Hard Times Chronicles videos. She doesn't like to see anything that's not from the same period as the subject matter. But there's that little table and you're seeing a bunch of computer stuff on top of it. And, you know, it's part of life. They all have to live together nowadays. All right, there's another one of those uh, eight drawer spice cabinets hanging on the wall here in the Sojourner room. And we're going to go around this room just for the purpose of uh, looking at wall hanging cabinets. We go along here, don't see any on that wall there. Uh, I thought there was one here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. There's one uh, back behind that, uh, those things. It's another one of those eight drawer wall hanging cabinets, but it doesn't have any drawers in it. The drawers are lost. I started making drawers for that one time and didn't get finished. I saw the pieces for them the other day, but I think I've lost some of them since I first cut them out. Coming around here, I don't see any. So we'll go along. Now there's one sitting on that table. That one too is a, it's a Hard Times original and it's a uh, Abner House piece. Um, it's got, yeah, it's got all the Abner House features in it. It's got the, the cornice with the trim under it and it's got that little piece that goes along there on the top that was a part of the Abner House trim and then it down there below the door it's got that little piece too they don't all have those the first ones I started making I got rid of that little piece and just made them plainer than that but I, after I made one like that I kind of like that I think all the rest of them have that feature uh, this is one of my favorite wall hanging cabinets and uh, Actually, when I made that, when I made two, I made this one and I made one uh, out of a door, just like that door, only opposite. Uh, I made a, a corner cabinet to hang in a wall. There's a story about that. I'm going to open it up. <clears throat> this one used to be that color. That was the original color of the, the uh, project that these were made from. It's kind of an old mustard yellow, and both cabinets were that. I didn't really like the color, but because it was an original old color with and it was old paint I made them like that I didn't change this one till later there's another one that's the uh, another one of those spice chest spice cabinets 
there's one that's that one's actually hanging on the wall it looks like it's sitting on top of that pie safe but it isn't it's screwed to the wall and hanging there Uncle Cobb made that one I suppose you could call that one a wall hanging cabinet too uh, might be a stretch it's got drawers in it uh, you could call that a cabinet That's another one, might be a stretch, it's not really a cabinet, it's a display case, it's got all my old badges in it. Now there's one that's definitely a cabinet, that one's an Easy Times original made by my daughter Brett. I think the last one in this room is that one, and that's probably the only one I have that is made out of metal. Uh, there's one in the bathroom in the house. It's got it maybe a metal case and a wooden door, but it's not old. It's a modern uh, Medicine cabinet goes in a bathroom Okay, we're on a hanging cabinet uh, mission. There's yet another primitive one that's uh, As is well, I've bought it at an auction haven't done anything to it probably won't It's got all the character it needs without my help Uh, that little gray cabinet there, it's a wall hanger. Uh, I think I bought that at uh, opening day of uh, Wildflower Antiques, but not sure. I got, uh, looks like I want $40 for that. Prices on all this stuff in here is negotiable. Uh, there's a little hanging cabinet, and uh, actually I'm not real proud of that thing. That could be bought for a really good price. I just made it to use as a display cabinet. Uh, one of the times when I had some smalls that I wanted to be able to lock up in an antique booth that I had. And so I made that cabinet and put a hasp on the side of it so that I could keep things locked in it. And uh, it came home from there and laid around the barn for a while. And I finally put it up on the wall and put some things in it here. Uh, looks like I want $40 for that, and I don't know. I'd say I could buy that for a little less than that. I knew there was another one here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. A little cabinet there. Uh, blue and white. Pretty primitive. It's just like I found it, too. Very nice little wall hanger. Uh, it's for sale here in the barn. There was an antique shop in Mitchell, Indiana, and they had a picture just like this in it. And uh, they had $750 was the price that they wanted for this picture. Of course, it never was worth that. Um, but they liked it. They were proud of it. It was. Uh, Kind of an unusual size, a little smaller than uh, most of the ones you find. They're usually about this tall. But it was $750, and I was always amazed that they had it there. And, of course, the whole time that antique shop was open, they had that picture, and uh, it never sold anybody because it was overpriced. But uh, it was worth probably at one time $250. And uh, before the Internet... Uh, this it and this picture here were probably worth about $250. I don't know what it's worth now. You can buy them for less than that. In fact, I have one. I have another one of these uh, that I bought. But, of course, it doesn't have the importance that this one does because it didn't belong to Cloney. But uh, Cloney used this on a daily basis, and uh, it managed to survive not being chipped or damaged. And when she... Uh, I don't know how uh, Mary got it, but Mary, either after Cloney died, she got it, or Cloney gave it to her before she died, I'm not sure. But Mary used it uh, the same way. I used to just cringe uh, when I'd go up to the house, and there that picture would be laying in the sink with uh, a bunch of other uh, utensils and, and uh, bowls and whatever that could have uh, damaged that picture. And I'd say, Betty, that picture of your mom's that's worth a lot of money you need to rescue that thing get it to tell, tell her to quit using that and, and quit putting it in the in the uh, sink there to bang around with other stuff uh, Betty 
uh, never did, but she finally uh, never was able to convince her of that, but she finally mentioned it enough that Betty uh, gave it to her, I think. I think that's how we came by it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we didn't buy it in an auction, so it was given to Betty at some point in time. But this picture belonged to Cloney Robbins, uh, and then it belonged to Mary Colgan, and now it belongs to Betty Mooneyham, and someday it'll belong to one of our children or one of our grandchildren. Okay, I don't have to be careful with that. That is a uh, winter lean lard bucket. I'm trying to see what size it is, and I don't. I guess I do have my glasses. Let me put them on. Four, four pounds net weight. That's a four pound lard bucket uh, from Winter, uh, Winterlean Lard Company in Bloomington, Indiana. Pretty common back in the days when people in Bedford uh, used <coughs> lard <coughs> to see these. And... Uh, I bought this just the other day because it has a childhood memory associated with it. I've looked for these. These, There was a time when you could buy these all day for $2. Every time there was one of an auction, that it sold. And the price basically went up and up. And, uh, I never was smart enough to buy one when I should have bought one. This one here is pretty grungy looking. It doesn't bother me that it is grungy, but uh, I could have had a pristine one of these uh, if I'd have just bought one years ago and kept it. I didn't. But, uh, as I mentioned, it has a story with it. I'm not going to tell the story now, but when I do tell the story, I'll have this little piece of video to put with the story. Okay, this uh, is, a, is a primitive duck decoy. Hold it up there and you can see it a little closer. It's a... Uh, when I said primitive, it is really primitive. It's made from a piece of uh, hand-hewn barn beam floor joist. And uh, you can see on the bottom it's marked with a, uh, it's got a hard times paper label on it. Uh, must have been out of, a printer must have been out of ink because it's not in color, it's a black and white label. You can do that very often. It says there, decoy made from hand-hewn floor joist, 1869 Fairview Church building. So, <clears throat> it's more than just a primitive decoy. It has history uh, with our church, and there's stories about that too. And, <clears throat> and uh, this, I made some of these for the Fairview Ladies' Aid Bazaar uh, silent auction, and uh, you're going to hear about those one of these days as well. Uh, but today you're getting to see a uh, primitive duck decoy made from a floor joist out from under the Fairview Church, which was built in 1869. Okay, that's what's called a bee sting croc, and I'm showing you that one because uh, it is for sale. Uh, it is for sale for less than you usually find a bee sting croc uh, like this one. Number four, bee sting croc, the old salt glaze, got some of the turkey dropping uh, glaze defects on it there at the bottom. Uh, croc like that, you'd expect to pay $150, maybe more than that, for it most times when you buy it. Buy it. Uh, this one's for sale here for... Uh, $100, uh, and that's negotiable. If you come out here and you like this crock, you can, we'll talk about what you'd have to pay for it. And the reason it is for sale, and you're not going to be able to see it, it's hard to find anyway. Uh, yeah, it has a crack in it that goes from about here to here. It's just a fine hairline crack, but it's there. Uh, it wasn't there when I bought the crock, but the crock sat around in here years and years, and it's developed a crack for some reason or another. And so that made the value of it go down. It gives, right now it's in here because it 
it was holding these. I don't know which ones are which, but uh, that's probably uh, Joseph and Mary and the three wise men. That's a camel. That's a person. That might be Mary. I'm not sure. That's a donkey. That's another smaller camel. There's a sheep. That must be a shepherd boy. So I think this is Mary. There's another sheep. And I think this is... I think this is baby Jesus, but I'm not certain. At any rate, these are all walnut. They were made with what I'm going to call a scroll saw. A little saw looks kind of like a jigsaw and it had a blade on it that probably was uh, in cross section circular. It looked like more like a wire uh, than it did a saw blade with some kind of abrasive on it. And these were made and uh, they were made by my Aunt Colleen and she gave them to me. So that is a walnut uh, nativity scene uh, characters made by my Aunt Colleen and given to me. When she made these, uh, she was trying to learn to be a wood carver. She bought herself some wood carving tools. She bought some books about wood carving and uh, she attempted to become a wood carver and I never did see any of her carvings uh, any of her complete ones anyway so uh, I would say that was a rare occasion where Aunt Colleen started something and then gave up on it but uh, I, I got these at uh, a few months after uh, she started that wood carving thing uh, she gave me these and I don't know whether she made these like this with that scroll saw and that was what she intended to make or whether she took that scroll saw and some walnut and she uh, did this with them and she intended for this eventually to be a carving uh, she was taking a shortcut uh, with a scroll saw and created these things and then never finished them I don't know uh, which of those things were true, and I didn't. I didn't want to ask her. <laughs> I was afraid she'd get aggravated if I said, "Aunt Colleen, is that an unfinished project, or or what is that?" I just took them and smiled and was happy with them, and I'm still happy with them. Aunt Colleen made them. They're walnuts. I like them. <laughs>